Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. This is S. Far, your host, and today we are going to be going over some re replays that got me into Ultimate Champion. Currently with 1,560 uh, trophies inside Ultimate Champion. I was able to go on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 game win streak. Uh, had some pretty good matchups. I had a... Uh, this graveyard matchup was pretty tough. The Queen um, Royal Hogs was tough. The Royal Giant was, you know, I had I had a matchup, and then the last game, the Log Bait with Mighty Miner and Inferno Tower, that was a tough matchup. So um, there was some tough matchups uh, to get the ranked. Um, the first game is a mirror match against uh, Nilisito. He um, gets Ultimate Champion every season. He has, you know, a classic uh, challenge badge. And um, let's go ahead and watch the replay. <clears throat> now, uh, this season has been um, fun. Uh, I got into Ultimate Champion pretty early this season. I still still 15 days left in the season. Um, I was stuck in Royal Champion for a while, as you guys can see in my last videos. I would just I would always get to one game away, and then I would tilt back down, then push back up, then tilt back down. Um, I had a 45% win chance, um, so that places me in 1,560 trophies. The higher win chance you get, the higher trophies you get, depending on how early the season is and how late the season is. I think if you get over a 50% win chance, you um, will get 1,700 uh, around those those trophies. Um, so I do like the, the system. I've been liking the Path of Legends. When it first came out, I wasn't a big fan. But now that it has a couple of seasons under the Path of Legends spell, I think it is fun. Um, I view Ultimate Champion like Masters 3 in the old system. So around 6,600 trophies in the old system. Around, I think it's like Masters 3 getting to Ultimate Champion. Then obviously going from Ultimate Champion to rank is, is going from Masters 3 to Ultimate Champion in the old system. So he goes ahead and plays his P.E.K.K.A. and he tries to play a Battle Ram underneath it. I was able to play the E-Wiz to stop the P.E.K.K.A. and the Battle Ram. The Battle Ram does get a connection. He does have a damage lead on the tower now with that push. He goes ahead and plays um, Magic Archer. I play Dark Prince just to keep the aggression because I know that he's low on mana. And I also play Battle Ram. And, um, so now we're at the same mana. I know that I'm going to have the damage lead on him. I could easily stop his ban bandit with just playing my bandit. Um, so that was a good play. And now his tower has 408 HP, and I'm going to get good damage on his right hand tower as well. So that was an overall good trade for me. Um, I've been playing with the Dark Prince. Uh, it's just been more fun. I've enjoyed it more. Um, so he plays his puck in the back. I just play Ewes in the back. And I get really aggressive with the Magic Archer. Because I know that the Magic Archer can take the tower, and um, I just play defensive. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. I play P.E.K.K.A. and then he gives me a lot of good poison value. So I go and play poison. All I have to do is defend the right hand side, and that's going to be a game over. I go ahead and play Dark Prince. It's going to stop the bandit. He plays his Dark Prince. And I know that there's no way he can win. The only way he can win is if I mess up. Um, I also wanted to give a good shout out to Nemesis. Uh, go ahead and check out his YouTube. Uh, he's why I got to Ultimate Champion so early. Um, I was really frustrated because I was fighting that new graveyard deck and the Rascals, and I just didn't really know, know the matchup with Pucker Burst Man. So I went ahead and I watched all his videos and uh, just started playing like how he plays. He's probably the best bird spammer player right now, him and Legend Gamer. So I got to Ultimate Champion just by watching his videos and just improving my gameplay. Um, and so let's go ahead and watch the next replay. It's against Dami. He has his uh, classic battles as well. And he doesn't. He didn't do last rank, and his highest is Master Three. So Royal Champion is his new highest. So um, he's obviously not the best graveyard player, but <laughs> with him not being that good at the duck does show you how strong the duck is against Pekka Bridgeman because this player didn't really know how to play his duck that well and um, I was able to squeeze the win still. But yeah, um, so yeah, so if you guys are looking for a good YouTuber, I would definitely recommend Nemesis and Alistair Legend Gamer. They both have YouTubes and they're both really good. 
And so, um, I go ahead and play the bandit to go ahead and clean up the barbarian. I did the zap because I thought the um, ice wizard was had less HP than it did. I play the magic archer. I play the poison. Um, he's gonna get a lot of damage with that baby dragon and the ice wizard, and all I have is just my magic archer. So he gets my tower down to 1,692, which is a very bad start for me. Um, my uh, Dark Prince is able to get some good damage, and so he's still a 500 damage lead against me because of how aggressive I was in the beginning. Um, that's why you don't want to be that aggressive. Um, luckily, he makes a lot more mistakes, and he's able to throw the win away. I get an awesome zap, and he also played his Ice Wizard too far back. So my bandit is able to get some wicked damage uh, on the tower, which is very good. Um, because that's is how I'm going to win later on. Um, all I have to do is just poison it twice and get one zap, and that tower is going to be dead. As long as I can defend my tower without being three crowned. Because a bridge spam, uh, because he could easily three crown me if he gets an epic... Um, graveyard off, and I, if I don't have a poison or magic archer to defend, he could easily, you know, have his baby dragon and knight tank while his skeletons build up, and it would destroy a tower with 1,548 HP like that, and then it'll go to the, the king tower. Um, so you do have to be careful with uh, with the graveyard decks because graveyard decks go from like zero to a thousand. Like they just they could if they get one good graveyard with good RNG. You're gonna lose your tower, even if you have magic archer within you. Um, so you do have to be careful. I play an aggressive poison, and he pun he's gonna try to punish me. Luckily, I have enough mana to um, get my magic archer and my e was down, so he can't take the tower. That was actually a really good defense on my part. Um, with the battle ram on the left hand side, he had to waste mana to he had to waste mana mana to play tombstone at night. I'm just going to ignore the knight because it's going to get decent damage but not enough to make a difference. I go ahead and, and I play poison and now all I have to do is just defend this last push and I win the game. Um, so I play magic archer and I play Ewas. He, he obviously messed up his poison because it activates the king tower but it doesn't matter because the king tower doesn't do anything. It doesn't activate fast enough to make a difference but I was able to take home the victory. Now, against any other graveyard player, it, I would have lost. Uh, so this guy de actually did get ultimate champion. He had a higher win percentage than I did because he's uh, higher in trophies than me. But he gets a... Uh, every season he gets a um, ultimate champion, which is good. Which I get ultimate champion every season as well. It's just a matter of getting your ranked. I'm always uh, on the bottom of ultimate champion, uh, which is fine. Um, uh, once I get better at the deck, you'll see me getting ranked, and that's what I'm going to shoot for once uh, I improve, once I know the matchups and, and the current meta and stuff. Um, so I go ahead and play the bandit. He's going to stop it with the goblins, because those goblins are extremely strong right now. Actually, any goblin in the game right now is, is strong. They've made goblins. That's the meta. It's just goblins, really. Um, which, I mean, it's fine for log red players, I guess, and gray red players with that new deck. So... Uh, and he's gonna go ahead. Once I saw the word delivery with the mini, with the uh, goblins, I knew it was gonna be the Royal Hogs Queen deck. Now, this matchup is very difficult uh, for a Pekka Burstman player. I do think the Royal Hogs has a slight um, matchup in this in this game, uh, just because um, it's a very defensive deck. <laughs> they could stop your pushes, but. I don't know what he's doing. He was being really aggressive with his log and with his earthquake. Um, so I was able to take advantage of that. I'm not sure why he was playing that way. But I make a mistake. I play the P.E.K.K.A. in the back. And he's able to get some really good damage with his hogs. I have to play the Magic Archer um, in order to defend. And I meant to play the Magic Archer so I could get a dual lane push. Uh, because I didn't really want to support the P.E.K.K.A. In this matchup... I like to do two lane push with my battle ram um, because if you try to push in one lane, in my experience, uh, with it just gives them too much value with uh, warrior delivery um, because warrior delivery will instantly kill everything behind a puck and push. And so I go ahead and I get the bandit. The bandit gets a good dash but just dies to the tower. Um, 
which I, I hope they change the bandit a little bit to give it just a slightly more HP or do more damage so that uh, buildings don't just shut it down that easily. I feel like the bandit does need a slight buff. She's kind of weak right now. She's really good, but she's a, she's a character that takes a lot of skill for her to be useful. Um, that's just my opinion. I think the bandit is a, it's a really good unit if you have the ability to showcase her, 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 her ability to her skill. Because she is a very hard unit to play. I play the battle ram, I go ahead and get the poison. And that's actually a really good poison because he places goblins inside the poison. And I'm able to get the um, bandit down. He misses the timing on his rural delivery. And that's why I was able to get the win, um, because that that bandit dash and connection with him missing his word of delivery was huge. Now, I knew that I won. All I had to do was just poison cycle and defend. He's going to be able to do push one more time with his word of hogs, just because it's a fast cycle. And all I had to do was just defend. Um, and so I go and I play the P.E.K.K.A. I play the bandit. And then I play the e -Wiz, and I know that there's no way he can beat me. And then I just get the zap and the poison, and that's going to be the victory of this matchup. Again, I beat this player just because um, he played very bad, and I was able to take advantage on the mistakes that he was making. So this guy has 100 classic challenge wins, he has 10 grand challenge wins, and he got the 21 challenge in 2018 like I did. Um, so pretty solid, solid player, he gets ultimate champion every season, um, it, it looks like it appears. And uh, let's go ahead and, and watch his Royal Giant deck. <laughs> now, I will say, I think Pekka does, definitely has a matchup in this uh, against his deck. Um, so that's good. The only Royal Giant deck that Pekka, I think is a 50-50, is the Royal Giant Cycle deck with Fisherman. Because um, if you're fighting against a good player who is good with Fisherman, um, it's, it's a tough matchup. So I thought at first I was fighting Explorer 2.6 because of, um, of his Skeletons, Knight, and, and his Musketeer. So I thought I was fighting against 2.6 or uh, Expo. Which I hate fighting both both decks, but once I saw Canyon, I'm like, Canyon Cart. I'm like, okay, he obviously isn't playing the ducks I thought he was playing, and so, which is good because I made a lot of mistakes early on. I was too aggressive, and don't don't be that aggressive with this duck. And uh, it was very interesting that he puts his Roar Giant in the back. I have no clue why he would do that, but I'm okay with that. I'm just going to play my P.E.K.K.A. for free in the back, and obviously the, the P.E.K.K.A. is going to shut down his Roar Giant. Now, I, the reason why I play Batarang in front of my P.E.K.K.A. is because I thought he was going to play Fisherman. But once I saw that he was back to his Musketeer, Knight, and Skeletons, I knew that he probably did not have Fisherman in his deck, and that he was playing a version that doesn't have it. And then he goes ahead and he kites my P.E.K.K.A. with his RG, but I'm completely fine with that. Because as you can see, my Dark Prince just goes to town on his tower, I get his tower down to 1400 HP, and I'm able to shut down his RG with my um, e Electric Wizard and P.E.K.K.A. And so... Once that happened, I knew that I was going to win. I played the um, Magic Archer so that it goes to the tower that's weak, and then he, he's able to clean up the, uh, the knight. So I go ahead and I play the Battle Ram. He does Log, Cannon Cart, which I'm completely fine with. I'm going to play the P.E.K.K.A. very aggressively just because he used a lot of mana to defend, and I know that his Cannon Cart can't do anything, and I play the e -Wiz to back up the P.E.K.K.A. And he just got done using Lightning, and so once he did that, I'm just going to play all my units behind the P.E.K.K.A. Um, that was a bad bandit, I should have waited for Log to be done with. But even though he was really aggressive with that Lightning, he does get away with it, because uh, Knight is very strong, it stops P.E.K.K.A. and stops the um, Dark Prince and Bandit. 
But luckily my bandit was able to get one hit on the tower, and now his tower is at 607 HP. So I'm going to be very aggressive with my battle ram. And I knew he had logs, so that was kind of a dumb play on my, on my part. I, I start to slow down, and then that's why I play the Dark Prince in the back. And I play the bandit, and I go in and get the zap. Now I hate when the, um... I hate when the bandit does that. When it hits the other unit and then goes back to the other side. And so luckily I was able to... And this got kind of scary. I thought that I might have sold and I, I might have thrown the game. But luckily I was able to get the battle ram and I was able to get the cannon cards destroyed fast enough. And uh, all I have to do is just poison cycle and... Uh, and I'm fine. He can't do enough damage to my tower. I go in and play the P.E.K.K.A. just so that the Musketeer doesn't lock on, because if the Musketeer would have locked on, he actually probably would have killed my tower. Um, he's a really aggressive with that cannon card push, but I knew that I was safe because all I had to do was just play the E-Wiz, and he wouldn't be able to TPS it, and I go for the zap, and I take his tower with the poison cycle. So that was a pretty solid matchup. I made a few mistakes here or there that almost threw the game. And the last game is against SSITM. And he is best season's ultimate champion, 1,800 trophies, and he got Roar Champion because of, of it being draft. Now, this uh, game was tough because he is playing Mighty Minor Cycle. Um, but I was just able to I went because I had all the counters to his pushes. I played defensively, and yeah, like I had zap, um, so I was able to get some damage with uh, obviously not with this push. <laughs> but since he already used Skarmory and all that, I was able to poison his uh, princess and get some damage on his tower. And I do have enough H uh, enough elixir to defend this goblin bearer. So. And this is why I like Dark Prince better than Ghost. I think it's a better counter to uh, Goblin Burr and Skeleton Armor. That's just my opinion. So, I was kind of frustrated that he hit the Dark Goblin instead of the Tower with that. But my Dark Prince does get a solid hit. And right now I am slightly ahead in the damage. Uh, he goes ahead and plays Mighty Miner to stop my... My bandit push, I go ahead and I play me my uh, magic archer. I actually do like the magic archer placement, and I go ahead and I play the Ewis, trying to save my magic archer because I wanted to play battle ram, um, but it doesn't quite get there. Um, I, I was unlucky because he got the reset as the tower shot my, my uh, electric wizard, so my electric wizard does die. But I was able to do 300 damage with that push. And we have the same elixir. So that was an overall good trade for me. And I knew that I have Zap in my hand, so I'm not afraid of Skarmy. Um, he's just going to go ahead and play the Mighty mighty Miner, which the P.E.K.K.A. does kill the Mighty Miner, and the P.E.K.K.A. does have decent life. I'm going to go ahead and do a Poison Cycle, because I don't want him to stack up those units. And That was a bad Zap. Um, I should have just let Doc Prince take care of it, but um, when I was playing, I thought that the zap was going to allow my Dark Prince to get a, a hit on the tower, so that's why I did it. Um, the E-Wiz is the perfect placement for the Goblin Bearer because it hits all three. And now, I have a really good push. Um, I put the Magic Archer in the wrong spot. He would have gotten some good hits onto the tower if it was one tile up. But I was afraid that the Inferno Tower was going to lock on, and I didn't want him, him to die. Um, but the Dark Prince is not going to get any hits because he's going to play Mighty Miner. I'm going to have to play the Bandit, and I'm going to have to use the Electric Wizard to stop that. And again, I hit all three so that he gets minimal damage onto the tower. And luckily, he messed up his placement with the Inferno Tower, and so... I was able to get decent damage with that battle ram, poison, and zap. Now I did miss my zap, so if I would have played a better zap, um, I would have gotten more damage with that push.
But here I go. I place him in the right spot this time, so he's able to get um, two hits onto the tower. He should have gotten five. I don't know how those last two hits did not connect, but it's whatever, I guess. Because the Mighty Minor didn't move, and he, t he got two to three hits before. But I know that all I have to do is just poison cycle. I have to make sure I can always defend his, his barrels because that's the only thing that's going to make me lose the game. Now luckily the bandit does a beautiful dash onto his dark goblin because he misplayed it. He put it in the wrong spot. So all I have to do is just poison cycle two times and get two zaps and I'm going to win the game. Now it is three times elixir. Um, that got kind of scary because I played my electric wizard to stop the goblin bear and I played it and then he played his scar move right after. But I knew that I do have my poison zap in the rotation and that's going to be game. So I was pretty excited to get ultimate champion this early. Um, hopefully I could push and get ranked this season So and if I do I'll be doing another video. I just want to say thanks to you guys for watching the videos, and I hope you guys subscribe and you keep uh, tuning in as I keep making this content. I hope you guys have a good season and keep on clashing.